Hello, my name is Katja Jäger, and I support the effective altruism movement by donating myself and also spreading the word as much as I can. And I today have with me Leah Edgerton, who is the executive director of Animal Charity Evaluators. Leah, it's great to have you. Your organization is doing research to find and promote the most effective ways to help animals. And you give recommendations of charities involved in animal related causes to donate to and even provide a charity quiz where one can learn about the different advantages of giving to a specific charity and find the most suitable for the personal cause. And only recently you announced your 2020 charity recommendations that you yearly give out and we're eager to learn more. Um, and so I'm giving the word to you and for everybody, if you have questions, you can post them in the chat. I will have a cl close look on it and forward them to Julia. Thanks. Thank you so much, Katya. And thank you very much for the organizers. It's an honor to be on such a panel of distinguished speakers. And I'm particularly inspired to see so many audience members who are attending this event who are committed to helping others with the resources that we have in life. Our event tonight brings together many of us working across a broad set of causes. We've just heard from Johannes about effective ways to address climate change. And later tonight, you'll hear from some of our colleagues working in global health and development. So I wanna to talk tonight about what makes effective animal advocacy a little bit different from these other cause areas. In comparison to global health, um, and development to climate change, which have very vast established academic fields with decades of studies to draw upon, animal advocacy has relatively little evidence to inform our work. There are very few studies that exist on almost any of the commonly used interventions. Um, the studies that do exist tend to be underfunded and hence underpowered, meaning that the results are relatively poor quality and difficult for us to learn from. And more fundamentally, the effects that we're seeking to measure are especially difficult to observe. So these are things like dietary change, behavior change, um, attitude change, and also um, like long-term change um, potentially in the uh, legal sector. So uh, what do we do about that? Well, the answer is that we're working on it and I will present some of the giving options um, in ways that you can support those types of efforts later. Um, but I also want to draw attention to the fact that effective altruism means using evidence and reason to find the ways to do the most good. So we draw upon studies from other fields, and we do take a pluralistic approach to avoid overconfidence in any one strategy. Another thing that makes our cause area particularly unique in comparison to others is that the members of the effective giving community have a relatively large influence within our very small field. So if we look, for example, at the amount of funding that the top three effective altruism organizations influenced in 2018 to farmed animals, we can see that we controlled about 25% of the funding in the movement. That's animal charity evaluators, open philanthropy, and the Center for Effective Altruism. I did a little bit of a calculation to compare this to global health and development. Um, I'll let my colleagues who are speaking later um, provide more information on that, of course, later tonight. But in comparison, I think that um, global health and development uh, from EA cause areas is influencing about 1% of the global humanitarian aid budget. So as you can see, it's a pretty different consideration that we're looking at in the effective animal advocacy cause area. So our response to addressing this is to, um, you know, while we're working in a cause where we have a lot of influence and relatively little evidence, we try to proceed with caution and we try to think about impact more broadly over the long term. So in addition to promoting individual interventions and organizations that we think are particularly effective, we try to think about the health and effectiveness of the movement overall. I'll talk about that a little bit later when I talk about some of our giving options. In practice, that has meant allocating resources across more organizations rather than fewer, um, lowering our standards of evidence for particularly promising approaches. So that's using reason again when we don't have good studies and having a higher tolerance for risk with the assumption that we just haven't necessarily uncovered all of the most effective ways to help animals yet. So in the same way that we do cause prioritization across different areas. So when we decide, um, you know, as effective altruists to give our money towards causes where we can do the most good, um, and we've identified, of course, global health and development, climate change, long-term impact, animal welfare, for example, 
um, we do cause prioritization within animal advocacy. So as donors who want to make the most difference for the biggest number of animals, we look for problems that are large in scale, that are receiving fewer resources than they deserve, and that have viable high impact solutions. So when we're talking about scale, uh, we look at the number of individual animals used and killed by humans. Um, so this is data from the United States, but it holds pretty much true across the globe. Um, among all the animals that are raised and killed by humans, uh, about 99% of them are raised and killed for food. Um, all animals living in shelters, used in research, living in zoos, used for entertainment, etc., are in the remaining 1%. And then in great contrast to that, they are receiving about 1% of the total funding going towards animal advocacy. Um, predominantly, the funding in this cause area goes to companion animal shelters, but is also split among um, groups working to improve the lives of animals used in research and entertainment, raised for fur, etc. Um, and in today's presentation, I wanted to take a minute to prevent, present this data in a little bit of a different way, and, and you'll find out why in a few minutes. Um, but here's just another way of looking at it. As you can see, among animals raised and killed by humans, uh, farmed animals vastly outnumber the other types of animals raised and killed. But I also wanted to men mention that the only population of animals that is even larger than the number of farmed animals is the number of animals living in the wild. These animals um, suffer from predation, starvation, disease, natural disasters, but little advocacy has been focused on helping them simply because we don't know of many interventions to improve the lives of animals in the wild. So here's a moment that we've all been waiting for tonight. Um, with all that in mind, how can we as individual donors best help animals with our donations? And I want to present three different giving options for you tonight. Um, we have our 2020 recommended charities, which as Katya mentioned, we announced last week. Uh, we also have a granting program called Ace Movement Grants that I'll talk about. And as I mentioned earlier, because of the lack of evidence in our movement, we um, have a research fund where we support uh, the creation of new research to help us be able to better inform our giving decisions and advocacy decisions in the future. So I won't get into great detail here about the charity evaluation process, but you're very welcome to look at our website where there's a lot more information. Um, generally, we use some quantitative analysis, including cost effectiveness estimates, room for more funding to assess charities, and we also look at qualitative measures for success, including whether the charity has a good leadership structure, good culture, whether they're engaged in a high impact cause area. So that's again, looking for things like farmed animals or wild animals. Um, have they learned from success and failure and um, other types of qualitative indicators of, of success where we don't have quantitative ones. So this year we have four top charities. Um, most of these are focused on reducing the suffering of farmed animals. Albert Schweitzer Stiftung, um, the Albert Schweitzer Foundation, sorry in English, and the Humane League are working to primarily promote the welfare of animals living on farms. They work with companies to um, pledge to improve the welfare of the chickens and pigs in their supply chain, for example. Um, Albert Schweitzer also has a focus on farmed fish, which we think is an ex exceptionally neglected and high scale intervention. Um, so those are pre predominantly working on, on welfare. Albert Schweitzer is working in Germany and Poland and the Humane League, while they're based in the US, they um, support a global network of organizations through the Open Wing Alliance. So they actually have quite a large worldwide impact. The Good Food Institute is also headquartered in the United States and they also um, have several international branches in pretty important regions in the world. Um, and they promote alternatives to animal protein. So they work on research and development, science and technology to promote um, alternatives to animal proteins, whether that's plant-based or cultivated in labs. Um, and then they also work on the policy landscape um, as well as the business side of things to help make those things a reality in the market. And Wild Animal Initiative is a, is a new top charity this year and they are also the first top charity that we've ever recommended that is working in the area of wildlife welfare. They um, are working within the academic field to promote the establishment of welfare biology as an academic field. So they are working to help us understand in the long term ways that we can help reduce the suffering of animals in the wild. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, that's um, 
kind of a, a new cause area that we're, we're seeing more and more charities work in and one that we think is especially impactful to gather more evidence on. Um, so those are our top charities. We also have nine standout charities. And these are um, charities that are doing you know, great work, um, but aren't quite as high performing in our criteria as our top charities. And um, what I'm really excited about this year is that these charities cover so much of the globe. We have our first standout charity in China, the Good Food Fund. We have many working in South America, uh, Vegetarianos Hoy is in Chile, Sinergia Animal works across the continent in South America. The Brazilian Vegetarian Society works in Brazil, of course. And then we have charities like FIAPO in India, um, Essere Animali in Italy, and um, we have two US-based charities, Compassion and World Farming, which is also working in uh, reducing uh, animal suffering on farms and Faunalytics, who are carrying out some really exciting original research to um, help inform animal advocates and donors on how to be more impactful in the future. Um, some of these other charities are working on meat reduction programs with schools, with public canteens, with companies. Um, some of them are working to improve the policy landscape for animals in their countries. Again, some of them working on corporate outreach and corporate campaigns. Um, there's a lot of creativity, there's a lot of different approaches, and we're really excited to see um, some local groups working within countries that um, where especially high numbers of animals are raised and killed, like India and um, China and um, Europe. So if you're a donor that um, one of those charities caught your eye, you can, you can donate through our website to any of those. Um, but if you're a donor who couldn't decide between many of those or you were excited about multiple of them, uh, we would recommend supporting our recommended charity fund. So donations that come to this fund um, get 100% passed on to our recommended charities. We disperse grants to those charities um, twice a year in January and July. And the allocation is determined by our research team at that time based on where we think it will be most effective. So we ask charities to report on their room for more funding on how much funding they've been able to bring in and we can assess based on you know who has what need for funding where we think this um, these donations can be best used and um, i can't share too much information at this point but i highly recommend that you stay tuned to our um, communications channels over the next few days because we have a, a really great matching campaign coming up soon um, in order to support the recommended charity fund. So you can follow us on your social media platform of choice, check out our website, or sign up for our newsletter to hear more. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, because of the large influence that the effective altruism movement has within farmed animal advocacy and the low amount of evidence, we don't want to be overconfident and have a kind of winner-takes-all effect in such a young stage of the movement. So we founded a couple of years ago the ACE Movement Grants Program, uh, which is aimed to kind of uh, complement the impact of our top and standout charity recommendations. So with this fund, we've given out more than two and a half million dollars among 108 charities in 32 countries. Uh, we have an annual disbursement and these are charities that are working in promising areas like capacity building, working in neglected regions, doing outreach to neglected demographic groups, um, maybe they have a really promising approach that we think is worth trying out, but we have very little evidence for yet. Um, so in general, these are kind of high risk, high reward uh, granting opportunities. Um, I'm really excited to share with you today that um, we're starting to see some really exciting successes from some of these charities. And actually three of our recommended charities um, from that I mentioned just a few minutes ago were actually originally recipients of ACE Movement grants over the last two years. So we're really excited for the impact that this fund has had in helping fostering new effective charities that can hopefully come um, become top charities themselves in the future. And then our last giving option that I want to talk about today is the Animal Advocacy Research Fund. We've had this program for several years now. Um, it was started by a generous uh, one-time donation by a large donor um, and we were able to grant out funds to uh, 46 different projects, which are helping us improve our understanding of effective animal advocacy. So these are studies that donors can use, that charities can use in order to help us learn, um, you know, in, an in a field where we have very little evidence, how can we make better strategic decisions? How can we better use our resources to make sure that they're helping as many animals as possible? Um, we have 22 completed projects on our website. We've been promoting open science framework policies 
And um, one of the most exceptionally, or one of the most exciting outcomes that we've seen is um, this is starting to build a academic field around effective animal advocacy, much in the same way that we have one around global health and development or around climate change. So one of the long-term goals for this fund is to um, have effective animal advocacy be established as a large-scale academic field where um, studies can come out for decades to come and help us all make more informed decisions on how to help best animals. Uh, we don't currently have an option for individual donors to give to this fund, although we may in the future, uh, but at this point we are looking for a uh, generous donor to support the continuation of this fund. So um, to all the millionaires out there or anyone you know who's a, a particularly high net worth um, donor in our fields, please put them in touch with us. We'd love to chat more about the um, potential of, of continuing this fund um, with a new model and uh, you know, continuing to create new research to inform effective animal advocacy. So these are the 2020 giving options that we recommend. So if you're a donor who really wants to be giving to places where um, you, know, you really can have a sure bet about your impact, where you can really rely on all the evidence that does exist, where you really want to know that your donation is going to accomplish a lot of good for animals, I would recommend giving to our 2020 recommended charities, either one of them individually or to a recommended charity fund. If you're a donor who is interested in more speculative giving, who is willing to take a risk, who um, wants to you know, have a more high risk, high reward um, approach, or are, if you're particularly interested in capacity building in the movement, we would recommend giving to the ACE Movement Grants Program. And then if you're a donor who really understands the strategic importance of research in the field and um, the high level of impact that this can have in helping us make us all effective over the long term, we would recommend supporting our Animal Advocacy Research Fund. Uh, we do have tax, tax deductible giving options in many parts of the world, so you can check our website for that. And we even accept donations in cryptocurrency. Um, I know tomorrow is Giving Tuesday and there's a big match happening on Facebook. Um, and we do have, several, like I mentioned, a, a matching campaign coming up in the next few days for the recommended charity fund. So thank you so much for your time. Here's my email address. Um, please reach out anytime if you have further questions about what we talked about today. And I also um, welcome any questions you want to pass on through Katya in the remaining minutes that we have. All right. Thank you so much, Leah, for, this, for these insights. Um, I currently do not see any questions in the chat, but I have a quick one for you. So um, what is better? Is it going vegan or donating $50 a month to animal charity evaluators? Well, these things are very difficult to quantify, but in general, um, the amount of animals that you can spare or improve the lives of per dollar is actually extremely high within effective animal advocacy. Um, Rethink Priorities is an organization that's done a lot of interesting research on cost effectiveness. And um, I would assume if, you're, if your primary concern is, you know, the direct amount of animals that you can spare per dollar um, or per effort, you'd be better off with a donation than by changing your own dietary choice. But of course, um, you know, changing your dietary choice is a high impact choice you can make for yourself and it might have longer term impacts like um, inspiring your friends or family to, to change their behavior as well. So um, I don't see there's a reason that you couldn't do both, but um, they're, both, they're both great ways to help animals. Okay, thank you so much, Leah. Thank you, Katya.